Hello church family, my name is Rosemary Soto and I will be doing today's Heart to Home Devo with you. But before we begin, let's open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this day, Lord, and we thank you for your love and your kindness and your gentleness, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that we have this opportunity to open up your word to dive into it and get closer to you, to know more about you and to know more about our purpose and how we handle things in this life until we are reunited with you. So Father God, I just ask Lord that you would just be with each and every one of us, take away any and all distractions that would keep us or prevent us from putting our full focus and attention on you. And I ask these things, Father God, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. So this past week in a women's Bible study up at Calvary Chapel Mountain Center, uh, we were in chapter 6 of Esther. And we were looking at how um, after the edict to assassinate or kill all of the Jews went out, um, that when Haman saw Mordecai, he was really bothered that he did not get the reaction from Mordecai that he was expecting. And it really bothered him. Um, and he ended up spending that evening telling his friends and his wife about all the wonderful things that he has, um, his children, his position, uh, his uh, money, um, but it all means nothing. It all availed nothing because of Mordecai. So what we see is um, that he's not content with all that he has um, because he was placing his value or the value of the things and using them as a marker or a way of measuring um, his own contentment. As we looked deeper um, into this lack of contentment that Haman had, we were led to 1 Timothy chapter 6, six verses 6 through 7 and 11. Let's go ahead and read verses 6 through 7. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop there and let's just talk about those first two verses. Um, here Paul is encouraging us to be happy with what we have. Now it may seem a little harsh or a little straight to the point, but actual, in actuality it's not. Um, because even though the grass may look greener on the other side of the fence, it doesn't mean that it actually is. But because as believers, when we are seeking God wholeheartedly, many distractions will present themselves. One of the tactics of the enemy is to, to distract us uh, from the work of God and to destroy our testimony of God. Paul recognized that material gain is a distraction and a trick of the enemy. Material gain is actually selfish ambition and not godliness. Before we can be content with what we have, with what God has blessed us with, we have to know that contentment starts from within, within our hearts and within our minds. Contentment is a frame of mind that is completely and independent of all outside influences. It never comes from the gain of external things. So if you're looking for happiness, fulfillment, peace, pleasure, or satisfaction, it doesn't come from the material gain. We can trust Paul in this. Um, after all, he was content in all things, as we read in Philippians 4, um, verses 11 and 12. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned not 
I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to need. We can have and we can abound in material things, but we must also learn to keep it all in perspective and in respect to God's will for our lives. And how do we do that? Well, Paul also tells us we do that by the renewing and the transforming of our minds, like we read about in Romans 12 too. We, like Timothy, are encouraged to be different from men like Haman, and we are called to pursue the things in verse 11. So let's read verse 11. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Pursue these things instead of greed, pride, and riches. Why? Well, because like we read in verse 7, we were brought into this world penniless with no pennies or even a wallet or a purse to put pennies in and we will leave in the same way. The things that make a person rich in this world mean absolutely nothing in the next. Pursuing the th those things, like we read about in verse 11, the, the godly things, um, they may not be as valued as they once were in today's culture, um, but they have never lost their value to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you that uh, your word always leads us and guides us to the right ways of thinking, the right ways of feeling, the right ways to see things, Lord, that we could always depend on your word to get us back on track, even when we do become distracted by the enemy, that we have your word as a weapon to use against him and, and his little tricks. And so, Lord, I ask that as we go through about um, our day or our week, that you would remind us that uh, we are to pursue righteousness and faith and love and gentleness and not look at the things that we don't have, but to look at all the things that we do have and to be content in that, to be content in wherever it is that you have us. And so, Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.